Hey there, how are you? you? Know, this is the first time that I've started this thing, and you're an expert. Huh? <laughs> and I obviously <laughs> am not, but I'm thrilled to see you there. I will do much better next time. I have an expert with me who's been helping me. <laughs> she did just great. So you've uh, you've been off a bit this summer, huh? I have, I have. What Taking you... a little R and R. How about yourself? You know, I've had no time for R and R, but I... I'm going to. I've decided in the next year I'm going to take a few days off. There's <laughs> a few days. A few days will do you well. Did you go away somewhere for your vacation? Yeah, we went to, uh, my wife and I went to Southern Utah. It was beautiful. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> I can yeah. find Utah on a map. So I'm pleased about that. <laughs> someday, someday, someday I'll actually go there. <laughs> so we don't have a lot of time. Should I get started or should we wait for? A few no, let's, let's get started. I know that, you know, one of the topics you wanted to talk about today was just some, you know, uh, new um you know more uh fertility advancements and so forth so you know what are your thoughts about that or what have you been uh playing with well you know i think that one of the talks we should have soon is novel treatments oh okay because there are some interesting novel treatments and i know you're interested in some of these too i thought today we would talk about the whole concept of how you treat this. And I think that, I don't know if it's happened to you, but I've been working on this for some years now. And it's almost as though every day things become clear to me. I usually wake up around 4 a.m. and the first thing that comes to my mind is exactly this. Because just like you, we care about all types of, of infertility, but there's something about helping women that are reproductively older that grabs us. And you and I care a lot about it. And I think in order to have any success with it, you have to understand the underlying concept. And, and too often, people just pick one thing or another, and they say that's what they're going to do. One of the things that was always striking to me when I would go to fertility meetings in the past is there would always be a seminar about what to do with women who are older reproductively. And there'd be five or six people talking. And then there'd be a summary at the end. And the summary at the end was, everything we told you doesn't work. Nothing works. And then you, really, every single time, for 20 years, that's what they would say. But I think the things that you and I do actually have a chance to help women in this situation. They're amazing women. They deserve to be mothers. And it breaks my heart when I see how long they've tried and been unsuccessful. So I would love to hear from you what you think some of the main approaches are for women that are older reproductively. Yeah, I, so I, 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 uh, I think that's a great, um, a great place to go. Um, before I comment, I just want to invite everyone who's here joining us today. If you have questions or comments, comments you can put in the comment section, questions, there's a little question mark uh, circle in the bottom right hand corner if you want to tap that and then add your question that will be easier for dr wood and i to be able to um, find those so uh, go ahead and do those there um you know when you were just talking about that my my uh, thought went back to a conversation i had with a woman yesterday who's 45 and she's in uh vancouver canada and she was telling me that the um, ivf clinics there won't even speak to her because she's 45 yeah. that once uh women in canada hit 42 that they get very very little support if any whatsoever um from the fertility clinics and, and the medical system there which was really just heartbreaking to me because it's really unfortunate there's really no reason why they can't get the support if they want the support and they want to continue to try um you know, so uh, when you were saying that, how for the last 20 years going to these meetings, they, they didn't give them a lot of hope. That's what my mind went to. Um, and I think that when we start talking about uh, women who are, let's say, 40 or 42 or older, and they are trying to, you know, their desire is still there, 
they're they have the uh ability and um open heart and and caring to raise a children and and have a family that first and foremost i think we need to um we need to give them an opportunity um and 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 i think that opportunity shouldn't come cuz so often i hear from those women that when they're when they speak to an ivf clinic or a physician about their fertility that everything's always so negative it's always about you can't it's not going to happen uh just use donor um or give up and adopt and everything comes from such a a negative place and I, i'm not saying that i think some of it is because we want to give um these women and couples uh, we don't want to give them false expectations and we want to give them you know we want to be real with them in terms of what they can achieve but that doesn't mean that has to be and that it has to come across in a negative way or um in a rude way that we can still support them and give them hope and belief without giving them false hopes um and that's one of the things that I love in terms of the way that you approach uh couples and how you support them is that you know it's up front it's real but it's it's positive and i think that's one of the key things that's really missing um for this population is that they're just missing a lot of just caring support um and that starts to take away some of their their hope and belief that this could ever happen you know i think you're exactly right i don't know why it is that so many doctors say when you hit 42 you're done the day before yeah let's do an egg retrieval let's try the day after forget it you have no chance <laughs> but I'll tell you something. 80% of the fertility centers in the world have never had a live birth over the age of 42. Never. Right. Not one. 80%. Yeah. So in a way, what they're saying is real. It's true, but it's true for them. Right. It's not true yeah. for, no matter what you do or where you go. It doesn't matter if you see Dr. Sklar, you're not going to get pregnant. That's what they're implying to these patients. and that's right. what i think is wrong just because you can't do it doesn't mean that someone else can't do it and these patients my gosh their their determination it's touching to me i'll say how long have you been trying to get pregnant 17 years can you imagine right. what kind of relationship can try can can be attempting to become pregnant for 17 years they still like each other and they're still going right. to go to dinner that night it's right It's amazing to me and you know we had someone last year fail 21 times. And I said that wow. so many times and they said no, no, we believe we can do it. It didn't feel like a lot to them because that's the way they are. And other people they fail once and they say that's it. I guess I wasn't meant to have children. So it 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 bothers me that that patients don't get a chance and like you and I do is try to find ways to help them. For example, I'll let you talk about it of course, but one of the things that you're renowned for is acupuncture. You know, as well as all the other things you do. And you know, there've been lots of studies about acupuncture. There've been positive and negative studies, but the latest study that looked at several different studies showed an improvement. And whenever something shows an improvement, I think we have to ask, ask ourselves why. because whenever you just believe something you read and there's no good explanation for it there's a good chance it was just a one off but this was right. a, a meta analysis of several different studies that were looked at well what's one of the things that happens when you do acupuncture there's an increase in blood flow in the ovary and one of the problems that happens to us all as we become older is blood flow is reduced we get less blood flow to our heart to our liver to places like that and that causes us to prematurely age. And so, I'd love to hear your thoughts on why you think acupuncture works in this group, but I have definitely seen it work and I'm asked routinely should I do it? And I always say yes. Yes, because I know that even if blood flow is good, it's not going to improve that. There are other benefits to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um I'm I'll comment on it in just a second. Someone just asked can they ask questions? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, it's easier for us to find them if you use that little question mark circle in the bottom 
right hand uh, corner um, and you post those questions and we'll get to those in just a minute. Um, yeah, so th for acupuncture, the two main ways that we find that it works for fertility is one of them, as you just mentioned, is increasing blood circulation. And if we can increase blood circulation to the reproductive organs, to the uterus, to the, uh, to the ovaries, then we can hopefully start to restore some function, bring more nutrients uh, to that area. And that over time will help to start to restore function in the ovaries, help with egg quality. Um, and then if we're also working on or, and trying to support the endometrium and the uterine environment also will help support that as well. The other way that I think is really valuable is by regulating the nervous system. When we're able to help support and regulate the nervous system, we're help to regulate the fight or flight response. Um, and with that, we can also help to allow the body to self-regulate its hormones. Because if that adrenal response, that fight or flight response is not impacting the pituitary and hypothalamus and the endocrine system, then it's allowed to function more optimally on its own. And that's where a lot of those primary hormones are produced. And so that is a key thing that we do. Now, there's a lot of other things that we can do with acupuncture, but those are the two main things when it comes to fertility. Um, and then sometimes we also can with... Um, you know, if it's incorporated pre and post embryo transfer, then uh, we can uh, try to reduce contractions and, and any discomfort or pain that's also associated with that. Yeah. I totally agree with that. I loved one of the things you said with time. And some yeah. patients will ask me, they'll say, they want me to do several acupunctures before the time of the transfer. But can I just have it done at the time of the transfer? And of course they can. Right. But, but I think your point that it takes time is exactly right. And I think everyone needs to understand that these eggs, they begin to grow at least four months before you ever see them in the ovary. And yeah. if the environment within the ovary is not positive, they can easily become negative or stop growing during that time. So I think um, we'll talk about ovarian rejuvenation at another point in, in this conversation. But that's one of the things we're trying to do. We're trying to provide a better environment for these ovaries. And so I think beginning even four to six months beforehand with acupuncture or NMN, something else we'll discuss, is really important. You can't believe for a moment that this is just a two-week thing or a two-day thing or, or a one-hour thing before and after a transfer if you're trying to do something that's this complicated. You've got to get normal eggs in order to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned, um, you know, the, the, uh, a few minutes ago about the woman who wants to have an IVF procedure. And they're so, so keen on doing it right before they turn 42. But the day after they turn 42, it's not okay anymore. So I was having this conversation with with uh, a patient yesterday, um, actually it's been an ongoing conversation since Monday with her about this because she had uh, an, an IVF uh, retrieval cycle and all her embryos were abnormal. And so she's been in this uh, quandary of should she move forward with another retrieval cycle now, which is what the IVF clinic wants to do, or what should she wait? And I was asking her to, to give it just another cycle or two because of the the um, time frame you just mentioned, those four months of trying to create a proper environment and create better quality eggs. And she says to me, well, in two months, I'm going to be 42. And I heard that the success rates go down dramatically when you're 42. And I said, you know, your body's not a light switch. It's not like all of a sudden on the day of your birthday, it just goes, we're off. It's time not to work anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, and as long as you're being proactive and doing something to support that function and to uh, provide your body and your ovaries and your hormones with what they need, then I think utilizing that time is appropriate. But if you're not going to be proactive, if you're not going to take advantage of that time, then no, absolutely, I think we should be moving forward with, uh, with another retrieval in that circumstance. So, you know, it, it just sparked that. Th that story has come up this week now multiple times. <laughs> you know, it, I guess it should have been obvious to me, but it wasn't that long ago that suddenly I realized what's behind everything we do. 
And so when I would go to these meetings and hear their possible <laughs> treatments for age-related infertility, they would say, well, what if, what if we start with a high dose of, of stimulation medication for three days, and then we drop it down for two days, and they would give these protocols, and of course they didn't work, because that's not how it works. And, and so the way I view things now is there are these eggs, and these eggs, let's say in a 44-year-old, those eggs have been in that woman's body for at least 44 and a half years. And now, for reasons we don't understand, they begin to grow. It's possible in any given cycle, this is in relationship to the woman you just mentioned, that let's say there are four follicles. It's possible that all four, before stimulation starts, I mean, not medical stimulation, before they begin to grow, all four eggs are abnormal. If they are, it's, it's over. You're yeah. not gonna get pregnant. You have no idea that that's true. You do everything right. You do a perfect protocol. You're taking all the right supplements, doing acupuncture. If they start abnormal, they're gonna stay abnormal. abnormal. And then you take a situation where maybe there are four follicles and one is normal. The sad thing is it is very easy to take that one egg and make it abnormal. If the, if the blood supply is not there, if there are problems with oxidation and things like that, there are all kinds of things, even before you start a cycle that can make it abnormal. So that's why you've got to prepare your ovary to allow that egg to grow. Then once you start stimulation, that's when the real problems begin. And that's why the 80% have failed repetitively, because what they think is they're older. They're not gonna respond very well. I need to give more medication. Boy, I need right. to really hit this hard and get as many eggs as I possibly can, despite the fact that studies show that the more medication you give, the lower the pregnancy rate. Why is that? It's because you're taking this one, you got lucky, you got lucky, you have a normal egg. And then they decide to make it abnormal by using the wrong protocol and then they watch your follicles grow. And when they get to a certain point, they say, okay, we're gonna trigger. We're gonna take these eggs out in two days, but they're a day late. And there's good research showing you go one day late, the chance of getting a live birth is drastically reduced because you've made that normal egg abnormal. And mm -hmm. so as I realize that, I now know why we do everything we do. Everything that you do that works has the effect of keeping a normal egg normal. That's all we're doing. We're not making abnormal eggs normal. We're not increasing the chance that this, that this follicle that begins to grow four months earlier will have a normal egg. We're trying to keep them normal. And so everything you do, everything I do, is around trying to keep them normal. And that's why we've been successful with women that are far over 42 because we're focusing on keeping that egg normal. I love, I love that, that sentiment there about keeping that egg normal. And <clears throat> I think that's a good uh, segue to uh, one of the questions that's, that's in front of me right now. It says, hi, does a 5CB embryo have a chance for a live birth? Well, everything in life has a chance. Yeah. But I'll tell you, a CB, that one's tough because the first letter refers to the fetal portion of, of the blastocyst. The second refers to the placental portion. So it's much better to have a BC than it is to have a CB. We have several babies that came from CCs. So it happens, but there's no doubt that pregnancy rates fall and miscarriage rates are increased if you have a C in either position. And so, the job of our lab is to try to avoid getting in a situation where that's all you have. But I'll tell you, it's particularly common in women, let's say 47 to 52, you get a lot of CCs. And fortunately there's a chance, but it's definitely reduced. Someone just here says, uh, Dr. Wood is amazing. I'm 42, I'm 52 and Dr. Wood helped me deliver a be beautiful baby girl this past June. Love to hear that. 
That's very nice. I, I did not actually deliver the baby. Deliver, right, I was going to say. It's been yeah. so long, I'd, I'd have to take a textbook with me to make sure <laughs> I did it right. But I, I really appreciate that sentiment. So I want to bring up, because I know we're getting late in this, I want to bring up ovarian rejuvenation. Please. And what does ovarian rejuvenation do? What it means is we take a sample of blood, we isolate the platelets, we activate the platelets. Usually we put them in an incubator for a couple of hours. And then we take the growth factors that are released from those platelets and we inject them into the ovary. Well, what happens? We know that blood flow is increased. We know that stem cells begin to develop and differentiate. They start to make a younger ovary because that's what makes things younger. When your body has to replace liver cells, it has to create new liver cells. And when stem cells are low, concentrations are low, when they don't differentiate correctly, then you get this progressively older appearing liver. And it's the same with the ovary. And so in my mind, the whole point of ovarian rejuvenation is to do what I said earlier. It's to keep an egg normal. Now, when I first started this, I used too high a dose. Now, these were low doses. These were mini IVF, but even mini IVF is too high. You have to go even lower than that because you have to guard, you have to protect that egg as it's going through this a grueling process. It's, it's been sleeping for four, four and a half years, and you're making it go through this process where it, where it increases in size 10 times, and you have to take care of it, and you have to provide it with the energy that it needs in order to do that. And that's one of the problems as women become older, is they don't have as much energy in those cells. And that's why we're not gonna have time to discuss it today, but that's why I'm such a big fan of NMN. Actually, if you don't mind, I wanna say Go something for it. about Let's do NMN. It. Okay, Let's do so it. I was a huge fan of NMN, let's say a year and a half ago. And we tried it and we saw very little effect. And I was extremely disappointed. And then I read the study and what they had done is they looked at all the major Amazon brands of NMM. And I forget the exact number, but roughly 90% were fake. And so I had picked the number one brand. That's what I had recommended. That's what patients were taking. And they weren't doing any better. Or doing any better. And so I then found the one. There's only a couple of them that I found that are real, that are true. And when we started prescribing that, I've seen something amazing. I have seen follicles pop out of nowhere. Women that have only had one or two follicles have four or five follicles because NMN is one of the key elements in anti-aging. So it's been amazing to me. It was a study I never anticipated doing. Can you imagine that? You give patients fake, fake X for six months and then you switch to real X? I mean, it's a horrible study, but but it was done and it's been so valuable for us. And I, I think it's an important, a critically important part of, of treating women who are older reproductively. And it, it has been, a, we've had women that have not had a follicle in years and now they have two or three follicles. I don't know if they're gonna get pregnant, but at least they have a chance. And oh, that's absolutely. what you do, we give people a chance. People that have been told you have no chance, we give them a chance. I'll be quiet and let you talk. No, no, no. I love, I love what you were saying. Someone was asking earlier, by the way, about um, stem cells, and I think she was getting the terminology wrong. So what Dr. Wood was just discussing when, it was, when he was talking about ovarian rejuvenation and PRP, that, that's basically what I think you were referring to. And so that was, that was the answer to your question, hopefully, um, when he was just giving that description. And I love NMN as well. Um, you know, and, and for me, not just with NMN, but with all supplements, quality is very, very important. We have to be careful of where we're getting them. Often, Amazon is not the best place to get our supplements. And so you want to make sure you're getting it from a, a reputable, trusted brand and company. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we make, uh, as providers, we make bad decisions when it comes to that, but we learn from it and, and hopefully we, uh, we move on from them. Someone was asking, can you spell this please? It's three letters, N-M-N, -N, so Nancy, Mark Nancy, that would be how you spell it. Um, some people I find get this confused with um, NAD plus or NAD um, or true niogen, which is often you 
discussed in kind of the same light. They're not the same thing, by the way, just so everybody understands. NMN comes first as a precursor to those. Um, and when you do look at the research, NMN is what makes a big difference in um, infertility infertil su success rates. It's not the NAD um, uh, plus. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What happened is one company basically got the patent on NAD plus. Yeah. And so that's why things went to NMN. But I think the studies are clear. It's much better to take NMN. We do use NAD plus in IVs. That's, yeah, one, that's of our, yeah. one of our, yeah. our latest um, advances, and it seems to really help. Again, you know I'm very research-based, so everything we do, we keep track of the data, and we're going to publish it. But I've been very pleased by what I've seen so far. And NAD Plus is just good for you, too. People, it's good for you. Oh, yeah. Nothing against it at all. you're perfectly yeah. fertile, it's, it's good for you. And oh, so, yeah. So... Um, we, we, we have something new about NAD+. Plus. And one of the problems with it is it makes you really nauseated. And okay. so any of you that have ever had it, they turn the, the rate down low. And sometimes this can go on for five or six hours. Well, we developed a new technique that involves giving medication right before you take it. And now women can do it 45 minutes to an hour. So it has dramatically changed how it's done and how effective it can be in a short period of time. Because women were having, having to take a day off from work to, to have the NAD. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, I can give more details, but we're very excited about that. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, um, we didn't get to all the questions that got posted and I apologize for that. Um, we, uh, we're, we're running out of, out of time today. So I wanna say thank you to everybody. We're going to be back next month. Bring your questions. We'll we'll do hopefully a better job of answering <laughs> of answering those next month for all of you. But hopefully, you found this conversation informative and useful on your fertility journeys. I know that I did. I always find these conversations valuable. So thank you, Doctor Wood, for your time and for allowing me to be part of it. It was great to be here. I love I love listening to you. I learn every time. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. We'll be back next month and all of you hopefully have a fertile month. Wishing you all success this month. And if not, we'll see you next month. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.